Okay, hi everybody, this is uh, Mr. Manning, and uh, this video is going to be for the third step of the accounting process, which is uh, creating a worksheet. So, a few things that you're going to need before you start the video. Um, you're going to need a blank worksheet. You're going to need your ledgers, uh, which you did in step two. You're going to need those fully completed. Um, I would recommend getting your transaction sheet from the month of May. Uh, the reason you're going to need this is the adjustments is listed at the bottom of it. And as usual, you're going to need a pencil. So go ahead and pause the video, go get those things, and then we'll get started. Okay, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you have all of your materials. So what I have uh, here on the screen is over here on the left-hand side, I have my uh, completed ledgers. And then over here on the right-hand side, I have a blank worksheet. And we're going to need to use the ledgers to transfer all of the balances, that is the last number that you recorded in the balance section. We're going to need to re, uh, use that number to record over here on the worksheet. All right, quick review. The worksheet um, has a couple of purposes. So the first thing is, is it's done at the very end of the month. Uh, it is always done on the last day of the month. So um, an accountant uses this to organize all of their accounts. Um, they want to make sure that their debits and credits equal, which is always really important. And then they also use it to um, record any adjustments, which we'll talk about that shortly. Um, organize the accounts into ones that are going to go on the balance sheet and ones that are going to go on the income statement, which both of those documents are in step four. And then finally, the worksheet actually will tell you if your business made a profit or loss. So let's go ahead and begin the worksheet. Um, over here at the very top of the worksheet, I'm going to, in the very center, I'm going to type um, the name of the business. Uh, the name of the business goes at the top of every document, and the worksheet's no different. So the name of our business is Extreme Adventures. On the line below that, I'm going to put the name of the document. This happens to be a worksheet. And then finally, you're going to put the day or the month. Um, the date that you're preparing the worksheet. So we are in the month of May, and remember I said we always do this the last day of the month. So I'm going to put May 31st, 2014. All right, the next part's pretty easy. Um, right here where it says account title, you're going to use your ledgers and you're going to list every single account that you have. And you want to do them in order by number. So for instance, the cash account is number 110. So it's going to be my very first account that I list right here. And then right next to it, I'm going to put what its current balance is. Uh, the cash has a debit balance of $14,075. So right here in my trial balance section, I'm going to highlight it for you so you can see this. I have a debit and a credit column. I'm going to record on the debit side fourteen thousand seventy five dollars and then I'm going to go to my next account which is petty cash so I'm going to put petty cash has a debit of 250 and then I just keep on going next one is accounts receivable Matterhorn University and they have a debit balance of 425. Okay, at this point I want you to go ahead and list all of your accounts and list what their balance is. Be careful to make sure that you put them on the right side. If it's a debit balance, put them in this column, the debit column, and if it's a credit balance, balance put it in this column. Okay. Okay guys, I'm back. Um, you can see over here in my worksheet I have recorded every single account and I have also recorded the current balance that's in my ledgers in the trial balance section and I was really careful to make sure that I recorded it on the correct side debit or credit. Now before I go any further I want to make sure that my debits and credits equal so on the very last line I'm going to put totals and I am going to add up all of my debits and I'm going to add up all of my credits. And fingers crossed, I am hoping that those numbers equal. So go ahead and do that now, please. 
Okay, so you at this point should have added up all your debit credits in your trial balance. Um, you can see that I have done the same and the total debits was 20595 and the total credits was 20595 So since these two numbers equal, uh, that makes me really, really happy because now I can go ahead and proceed. If these two numbers did not equal, you would actually want to stop what you were doing, go back to your ledgers, and make sure that you have not made a mistake somewhere because debits and credits always need to equal. All right, the next thing we're going to do is work with our adjustments. And before we do that, I'm going to get rid of this one and expand this one so you can see it a little bit better because you are done with your ledgers. Um, and if you have your ledgers in front of you, you can just put them to the side. All right, so I am going to be looking at the um, Extreme Adventures transactions for the month of May. And this uh, document should look familiar to you. I'm going to go all the way down to the second page. Uh, this is where all the transactions are that you used to record into your general journal. And at the very, very bottom, there is a section that says adjustments. And when you first saw that, you probably didn't know what they were. Um, adjustments is these things that we do at the very end of the month to show our current um, value of a couple of accounts. The two accounts that we're going to be looking at right now is the supplies account and the prepaid insurance account. So here's the deal. Um, whenever you are running a business, you purchase supplies throughout the month and your employees use those supplies. Uh, because if you remember, supplies are things like pens, pencils, staples, paper clips, uh, copy paper, all sorts of things that you use in your business. And those things get used up. So at the very end of the month, you actually have to adjust their value because they are not going to be the same value that you had at the very beginning of the month. Some of the supplies were used. Uh, the same thing happens with prepaid insurance. Uh, most people buy insurance ahead of time, and then as time goes on, they use that insurance. So at the end of every month, we have to make a couple of adjustments to these accounts to show what their current value is. All right, now we're gonna do supplies first. It says on May 31st, you took an inventory of your supplies. You currently have $620 worth of supplies. All right, so back over to my worksheet. If I look at my supplies account, at the very end of the month, I had a debit of $1,470. Unfortunately, that's not right. Uh, we took an inventory, so we probably actually walked around the office and counted up all the supplies or got really close to it and, and estimated it. And we found out that we actually only had $620. So what we need to do is find how much supplies we actually used. Uh, what was the difference between what we thought we had and what we actually had. So you're going to take $1,470 and you are going to subtract $620. Do that now, please. Okay, so hopefully you were able to do that and you can see that I have already recorded mine. Um, I found the difference to be $850. Now, I recorded this in the credit section. And you might be wondering, why did he choose the credit section to do this? Um, I had a debit balance of 1470 and I wanted that balance to go down. So I needed to put a credit of 850 Now, we have recorded a credit transaction, and you guys have learned by now that for every credit, there must be a debit and vice versa. So we need to also record a debit transaction to make sure our debits and credits remain equal. And the way you're going to do that is go all the way down here to Supplies Expense. And on the debit side, I'm still in my adjustments. On the debit side, I'm going to put 850 Now, I also need to do my supplies, or excuse me, insurance. Um, it says on May 31st, the value of our prepaid insurance was $1,000. So I go back to my worksheet. I thought I had 1200 I actually only had 1000 so I'm going to just do some really quick math. Uh, $1,200 minus 1000 equals 200 
I'm going to record that in the credits section as well because I want the value to go down. And just like before, I need to do an offsetting uh, transaction. So I'm going to go to insurance expense and record $200. Okay, now before I go any further, I need to make sure that my debits and credits equal again. This one shouldn't be too tough since there's only a couple of numbers. So I know that that equals 1050, and this one also equals 1050. All right, next step. Um, I am going to transfer my numbers from the trial balance over to either the income statement section or the balance sheet section. And you're probably wondering, well, how do you decide which goes in which? Uh, right here in the middle of the worksheet, there is a, an account called Income Summary. An Income Summary works as a divider. In fact, I am going to highlight this so that you can see that it's a divider. Everything above Income Summary, so all of these accounts right here, are going to go to the balance sheet. And everything below Income Summary is going to go to the Income Statement. For most of these, I can just transfer them over. So I had a cash debit of 14075 I go over here to my balance sheet, and I put that number in. Same thing with petty cash. I just transfer the number over. Accounts receivable Matterhorn University. Accounts receivable Midwest College. Now, supplies is a little bit different, because on my supplies account, I had an adjustment. I started with 1470 I did a credit of 850. That means that I have 620 left. Same thing with insurance. 1200 minus 200 gives me 1000. Uh, accounts payable done supplies 400. Notice I'm over here on the credit side now. Greenway supplies 120. Capital 15,000. And Brian Dawson drawing. 200. Now all of these accounts are going to go to the income statement. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just transferring the number from here to here. Insurance expense had an adjustment. I started with zero. I had an adjustment of $200 debit. So that means I got $200 here. Miscellaneous expense, $750. All right, that's pretty easy. I just transferred all of these numbers to their lo correct location. The reason you do that is this will tell you what accounts go where whenever you do step four, which is the balance sheet and the income statement. Now, at this point, I need to add up all four of these columns. So go ahead and do that now. Okay, you can see that I have uh, put in my totals. I added up all of the debits for my income statement. I got 3,900. Credits was just 5,075. I just had to bring the number down. All of the debits for my balance sheet, 16,695. And credits, 15,520. You'll notice these numbers do not equal. That's OK. This is the one time where it's all right if they don't equal. Um, I want to find the difference between these two numbers. So I'm going to take 5,075 and I'm going to subtract 3900. And the answer is 1175. Now I put it here on the debit side because I am going to eventually want to add these two numbers together to equal this one. I'm also going to subtract these two numbers. I got the same number as before, 1,175, 1,175. That's a good thing. I want these two numbers to equal. In fact, this number right here represents my profit. Um, I know it's a profit because on my income statement, I am comparing my sales to my expenses. Sales is the amount of money coming into the business. Expenses is the amount of money leaving the business. If sales is higher, I made a profit. And in this case, I made a profit of $1,175. All right, the very last thing I do is I add up all of these. Everything equals, I'm happy, happy, 
and I am done. Thank you for watching the video. It's time for step four.